to PNB News coming to you live from the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. I am Omar Hefe. Peace or Semere. First, the headlines. Nigeria's mid labor unions suspend strike for a week in order to continue talks with the federal government. News agency of Nigeria pledges to work with politics and business TV. On business news, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria accuses Central Bank of Nigeria of prioritizing the financial sector over the real sector in the country. On the foreign scene, United Nations renew calls for an end to violence against Palestinians in the occupied West Bank. In sport, ahead of Wednesday's draw for the FIFA Under-20 World Cup slated for Colombia later this year, Nigeria's under-20 girls have joined Brazil, USA, Netherlands, Mexico and New Zealand in Port 2 category. Details coming up shortly. Right, welcome back. Now the news in detail. A news reaching us now says that President Bola Tinubu has directed the Minister of Finance, Wali Edun, to come up with the cost implications on the new minimum wage within two days. Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, made this known while briefing State House correspondent after a meeting uh, the negotiation team had with the President at Aso Rock on Tuesday. We'll bring you details of that story in our subsequent uh, bulletin. In the meantime, Nigeria's main labor unions have suspended an, in, an indefinite strike for a week on Tuesday in order to continue talks with the government over a new minimum wage after government reforms caused inflation to spike. Worsening a cost of living crisis, the Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, succeeded in shutting down the national greed and a disrupted flight across the country on Monday as part of the strike. Unions and the government met late on Monday for talks where the government said it was open to a higher monthly minimum wage than the amount of 6 thousand naira it had proposed. But a new amount is yet to be announced. TC President Festus Osifo told newsmen after an extraordinary meeting today that it was decided that the ongoing strike be suspended for one week in order to continue negotiation with the government on minimum wage. President Bola Tinubu has been under pressure to reverse his decision to scrap a popular petrol subsidy that had kept fuel prices low but was costly on government finances. Earlier, the head of Nigeria Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, Nupeg, said it was holding off from recalling workers from offshore rigs pending the outcome of talks between the government and labor on Tuesday. Nupeg represents workers across the oil and gas sectors, including upstream oil platform workers, fuel tanker drivers and pump attendants, and its decision on the strike is closely watched by oil markets and could lead to a significant escalation of the union's dispute with the government. Now, joining me to discuss this is an economist, uh, Yushua Liu. He joins us live via telephone to discuss this uh, latest development. A very good evening to you, um, Yushua Liu. Thank you so much for joining us on PNB News Live. Right, we're making uh, deliberate efforts to connect with uh, Yushua Lee, who is an economist, to give us his own take on this particular subject matter. Right, Yushua Lee, thank you so much for joining us on PNB News Live. Uh, thank you, Good evening, Nigeria. Right, um, Nigeria's main labor unions, by that I mean uh, the Nigeria Labor Congress, and of course, uh, counterpart, uh, the Trade Union Congress, they've actually suspended the indefinite strike, which actually commenced yesterday for a week. And uh, this may not have come as a surprise to you, right? Uh, it's not a surprise. We are expecting the, the, the strike to be called off based on many factors. One is that the bulky uh, number of Nigerians who are who are facing so much of economic challenges uh, it's not doing well for them that is one second 
even the level itself is not comfortable. It's after it's it's after serious consultations with the with the stakeholders. That's why they embark on this strike. The third one is, you know, it's a season of pilgrimage, and uh, 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 a lot of Muslims are. Uh, are going for uh, the annual pilgrimage to Mecca. Yeah. So, and this has distorted the movement. So, it's a concern for fellow Nigerians that have the last opportunity to visit the Holy Mecca. These are three factors that I think if we look into them, we now conclude that the strike that is suspended is good for the economy, is good for Nigerians, and is even good for government. Well, absolutely. Um, earlier today, Nakon had actually, you know, issued a press statement, you know, cautioning uh, labor unions to rescind uh, its decision uh, because, of course, this uh, ritual is an important one for every Muslim. And, of course, we know that uh, uh, the, the, the total blackout yesterday affected or had a bite on... Uh, Almost everyone, if not every Nigerian. But now, uh, the, the news reaching us now says uh, President Bola Tinibu has, you know, instructed the Minister of Finance to present within, you know, uh, two days a new template for a new uh, minimum wage. What are your thoughts on this? You see, the president has been so reluctant to checkmate the excesses of the committee. The committee was appointed, tripartite committee, to uh, try and, 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 and design the best minimum wage for Nigerians. Remember, uh, President Bola Tinibu, when elected, even before the swearing in, has promised Nigerians a living wage. And now the, the entire nation is not even speaking about a uh, living wage, we are speaking of minimum wage. And remember the fact that uh, the Labour Union on 1st May have directed, have instructed, have informed everybody that if, if an agreement is not reached, they are going on strike on 31st of May. And they have honored the, 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 uh, all the promise they, they, they tendered to Nigerians. But I think the president, by him uh, putting a committee, is in, is in good faith. But what we are urging is the fact that most of the committee members, most of the personalities involved, they don't have any reason not to come out with a designed minimum wage for Nigerian workers that will solve a lot of issues that will give them. Uh, foster our development process or they should be more uh, Nigerian in, in, in deciding the minimum wage, looking at uh, the situation that in every home inflation has taken over all the resources that the Nigerians are taking in the market and that's why we have slow growth uh, process. Right, uh, while well, we wait for the Minister of Finance, you know, to come up with the template for a new minimum wage, what are expectations like? Um, uh, some Nigerians are speculating between a hundred and a hundred and twenty thousand. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, the Friday minimum wage has to do with a lot of factors. But from my own point of view, the committee was given so much time. The committee was given so much resources. They should look at the uh, the, the, the comfort zone they, as they, they are. And also to look at how they can uh, share the prosperity with the rest of Nigerians. What I mean is that I am not presenting any figure, but I am presenting a figure. A friendly uh, minimum wage that will be comfortable for, for government to pay and also that will assist workers to perform for, for productivity. Absolutely. Let's leave it here for now. Economist Usual, you thank you so much for talking to us on PNB News Live. Yeah, thank you, Omar. Thank, thank you. Right. Uh, moving on to other matters now. Uh, the Senate has uh, pledged to give the national minimum wage a bill accelerated a hearing anytime president bola tinubu sends it to the national assembly for proper legislative actions the bill will be sent to the federal parliament for legal backing whenever the organized labor and the federal government conclude negotiations on it senate president uh, godswill akbabia gave the assurance at plenary on tuesday while reacting to the news of the suspension of the industrial action embarked upon by the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, since Monday. The upper chamber was debating a motion on the urgent need uh, for uh, the organized labor unions to call off the uh, industrial action when the news of a strike suspension was announced by the Deputy Senate President, Jibril Barao. 
the chairman, Senate Committee on Labor and Employment, Senator Dickett Plang from Plateau Central, had moved the motion for deliberation at plenary. Aquario said taking the motion would amount to jumping the gun since the labor unions had already put the industrial action on hold. He noted that on their part, the senators will continue to do their best by making contributions and at the same time awaiting the bill on minimum wage for them to enact for the benefit of all Nigerians. He appealed to the labor unions to consider all the variables surrounding the increment in wage before insisting on a particular amount. Now, the lawmaker representing Bochi Central, Senator Abdul Nengi, has resumed his legislative duties in the upper chamber after a three month suspension. He was suspended in March over budget padding claims. Senator Ningi, a People's Democratic Party a PDP senator, was cited on Tuesday at the National Assembly premises in Abuja, being driven in his black Toyota Land Cruiser Jeep. The senator was recalled on May the 28th after a process was initiated by Deputy Minority Leader Senator Abba Moro, who expressed regret on behalf of the suspended lawmaker. He pledged to assume a full responsibility for Ningi's actions, acknowledging the gravity of the suspension. The senator's conduct during the period of suspension has been a matter of scrutiny and debate within the legislative body. The president of the Senate, Gotsu Lakbabio, announced the unconditional recall of Ningi after a brief plea by some lawmakers. Akbabio emphasized the senator's resourcefulness and described him as a valued member of the Senate, adding that the decision to recall Ningi transcends religious and ethnic divides. Ningi was recalled some two weeks uh, to the end of his three month suspension which is supposed to terminate on June the 12th, 2024. The Nigerian army has handed over the eighth recently rescued kidnapped student of the Confluence University of Science and Technology in Kogi State to the state government. The students were reported to have been rescued on Sunday in a forest near Oroago village in Kwara State following coordinated search and rescue operations by the Nigerian army in collaboration with the Nigeria police force and other security agencies. The Nigerian army in a statement posted on X on Monday revealed that it formally handed over the students to the Kogi State government in a ceremony at the headquarters Nigerian army conference room in Abuja. The governor of Kogi State, Alhaji Ahmed Usman Ododo, who received the student, expressed gratitude to the Nigerian army and other security agencies for their dedication and sacrifice in rescuing the student. The governor also reiterated the Kogi state government's unwavering support for the security forces in the ongoing operations against terrorism and other criminalities in the state. The chief of policy and plans, Major General Abdul Salam Ibrahim, who represented the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Taurid Lagbaja, at the event, assured the governor that the troops will continue to work in synergy with other security forces to track down the kidnappers and bring them to justice. The suspected bandit had swooped on the campus on May the 9th and whisked away an unspecified number of students preparing for their first semester examination as scheduled to start the following Monday, which was May the 12th. On May uh, the 13th, seven of them were rescued in the forest beside Obajana Road, while another 14 were also rescued a week later. Last week, the Kogi State Police Commissioner, Bertrand Onoha, confirmed the killing of two of the kidnapped students. The Police Service Commission, PSC, has released a list of 10,000 successful applicants for recruitment into the constable and specialist cadres of the Nigeria Police Force. Spokesperson for the PSC, Kichuku Ani, made this known on Tuesday in a statement, noting that it worked with guidance uh, from relevant stakeholders, including the Nigeria Police Force, the National Assembly, and the Federal Character Commission to ensure fairness and justice in the recruitment process in the spread of successful candidates across the 774 local government areas of the country. A breakdown of the recruit shows that 9,000 applicants were approved for general duty, while 1,000 applicants were recruited for the specialist cadre. The Commission had earlier inaugurated a recruitment board, a broad-based stakeholders body populated by representatives from the PSC, the NPF, the Ministry of Police Affairs, the Federal Character Commission, police colleges and the police trust fund to superintendent over the recruitment process and report back to the PSC. 
The Saudi Ministry of Health has approved the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, to operate two main clinics for Nigerian pilgrims in Maka. The executive chairman of NACON, Malam Jalal Arabi, who made this known in Abuja, said the approval letter was received by Dr. Abubakar Ismail, NACON's head of medical mission for the 2024 Hajj season. The Saudi Ministry of Health revealed this development through its medical consultant attached to Itra al Qaeda company, NACON's chosen service providers, otherwise known as Muasasa. The two main clinics, which are located at Masfala Kudai and Shari, Shari Monsu areas, serve as the medical head offices. The chairman also said the approval to start running three other outpost clinics was still being awaited. Dr. A. Ismail expressed optimism that within the next 48 to 72 hours, the three outposts would also receive full approval to operate optimally. Moving on, the chairman of the Presidential Tax and Fiscal Policy Reforms Committee, Taiwo Oyedele, has said the proposed plan to increase the value-added tax rate from 7.5% to 10% will be implemented in phases. This followed the realization from empirical data which confirmed that less than 10% of affluent Nigerians fulfilled their obligation to file and pay the correct amount of taxes to the government. Speaking at a public consultation workshop for journalists and public analysts in Abuja with the theme, proposed changes to the national tax policy, uh, tax laws and administration. Mr. Yedele stated that the VAT revenue sharing formula had also been reviewed to increase state collection rate from 50 to 55 percent, local government area to 35 percent and reduce federal government rate to 10 percent. He asserted that implementing this measure would not only enable the government to sidestep a notable decline in revenue, but also mitigate the sudden surge in prices of goods and services. That is a 7.5% consumption tax administered by the Federal Inland Revenue Service when goods are purchased and services rendered. Now, the news agency of Nigeria, NAN, has pledged to support new and existing media houses to curb the menace of fake news in the country. The managing director and chief executive officer of NAN, Ali Muhammad Ali, made the pledge when he played host to the management of politics and business television in his office. Correspondent Rilwan Musagawu reports. The news agency of Nigeria has said it will continue to foster cordial relationship and synergy for a more effective news dissemination amongst private-owned broadcast stations in the country. This was made known by the managing director and chief executive officer of NAN, Malam Ali Muhammad Ali, at the NAN headquarters in Abuja when the management of politics and business television paid him a courtesy visit. The managing director assured that NAN is open to every broadcast station and it's ready to support every broadcast station willing to explore through its first-hand news gathering as it boasts of the most reliable source of news. Right, so no one knows Nigeria better than the news agency of Nigeria because we have reporters all over the place. We are in all of its cities, we are in some districts, senatorial districts. All in all, we have over 600 reporters. So, collaboration, yes. Collaboration, we welcome. By use of time to our various projects. And because we are still here in the business, I will use my executive hand to give you a 50% whatever. <laughs> Earlier, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Politics and Business Television, Abuja, Hajiya Madina Azaiki, appreciated the gesture of the NAN MD for taking PNB TV as his family, while urging that the station would make judicious use of NAN as a tool to reliable and efficient means of news information. So I want to congratulate you guys for your efficiency, for your promptness, and for the fact that you are giving us an image that you is internationally accepted. You know, when people say government agency, they always look at it now. Is it those people who would like their feet spend extra time to do 
Highlight of the event was the presentation of Gifts Park by the NAN MD and familiarization among members of both NAN and PNB TV. From NAN headquarters in Abuja, I am Rudon Musago reporting for PNB News. Rudon Musago, there, thank you for that report. Now, let's talk business. <music> Right, talking business now, the senior special advisor on industrialization to the president of the African Development Bank, AFDB, Professor Yebanji Oyelaran Oyenka, has proposed solutions to boost Nigeria's industrial sector. In a statement made available to newsmen on Tuesday by the Nigeria Society of Chemical Engineers to celebrate the 93rd birthday of Mr. Anthony Shobo, Professor Oyelaran Oyeinka explained the need for government to support local companies and the creation of an environment that would make them efficient and competitive. In the public lecture titled Why Nigeria's Development Lags, Causes and Consequences of Premature Deindustrialization, he emphasized the importance of investing in capabilities at the factory level. He described deindustrialization by two metrics falling employment in manufacturing as a share of total employment and the decline in the share of manufacturing value added in GDP. Now, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, has accused the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, of prioritizing the financial sector over the real sector in the country, evident by the continuous increase in interest rates by the Monetary Policy Committee, MPC, of the Apex Bank. Director General of MAN, Sheguna Jai Kader, stated this in reaction to the latest hike in the monetary policy rate by CBN. It could be recorded that last week the MPC increased the NPR by 150 basis points to 26.25% from 24.75%, while the liquidity ratio was left unchanged at 30.0%. The committee also opted to maintain the cash reserve ratio of deposit money banks at 45.0%. Highlighting the implications of these measures for the manufacturing sector, Ajay Kader said that the MPC decisions will further exacerbate the challenges of the manufacturing sector, further tightening credit interventions and increasing loan costs as well as raise production costs, limit fund accessibility and the road investment and competitiveness within the manufacturing sector. The man DG said that the current monetary stance would lead to constraints on investment and expansion, hindering manufacturers' ability to invest in innovative technologies, expand production capacities, or venture into new markets. Now let's head on to the international front. Let's start off with India, where the Prime Minister Narendra Modi has claimed he will form the next government, even though uh, he's the uh, Bharatiya Janata Party, that's the BJP, is projected to lose its majority in parliament after a decade. As India counts votes, trends so far suggest BJP will likely need the help of allies as a united opposition led by the Indian National Congress uh, makes our gains. The Mammoth Seven phase election. The world's largest democratic exercise began on April the 19th and ended on Saturday. A party or coalition needs 272 seats to cross the majority mark in the 543-member Lok Sabha, that's the lower house of India's parliament. Exit polls said Modi could return to power for a third consecutive term. The Election Commission says a record-breaking 642 million voters cast their ballot in the staggered election as it dismissed opposition concerns over how the votes would be counted. Now, the United Nations has renewed calls for an end to violence against Palestinians in the occupied West Bank. United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk, said in a statement released on Tuesday that in addition to the death toll in the Gaza Strip, the people of the occupied West Bank are also being subjected to day after day of unprecedented bloodshed. 
Turks' comment came as uh, the Israeli military and settlers carried out new attacks in the territory. Pervasive impunity for such crimes has been a commonplace for far too long in the occupied West Bank, he said, adding that this has created an environment for more unlawful killings by Israeli forces. He said Israeli forces shot dead 16-year-old Ahmed Ashraf Hamidat on June 1st and critically wounded 17-year-old Mohammed Musa Al-Bitar, who died a day later near the Akabat Jabal refugee camp in Jericho. The war in Gaza has seen a wave of violence and arrests unleashed in the West Bank. At least 505 Palestinians have been killed in the occupied West Bank since the October 7 attacks on Israel. That's according to data confirmed by the UN. The data also shows that 24 Israelis have been killed. A tally by the Palestinian Prisoner Society uh, records, uh, records uh, the, the arrest of 9,025 people in the same period, including 300 women and 635 children. And many of those who have been released have reported of being tortured and abused during their detention. From the foreign scene now, let's head on to the world of sports. Well, ahead of Wednesday's draw for the FIFA Under-20 World Cup slated for Colombia later this year, Nigeria's Under-20 girls, the Falconet, have been grouped in Port 2, along with Brazil, USA, Netherlands, Mexico and New Zealand. The 2024 finals in Colombia will be the first to welcome 24 teams, with Africa supplying four, that's Nigeria, Morocco, Cameroon and Ghana. Matches will take place in four venues in three different cities, Bogota, Medellin and Cali. Uh, there will be two venues in Bogota, that's Estadio El Campin and Estadio El Teco. The Estadio Antanasio Girardot in Medellin and the Estadio uh, Pascal uh, Guerrero in Cali are the other venues. Well, Real one Musaga who takes it from here. Nigerian National League campaigners Wiki Torres of Bochy has sacked its coach as this out of a failure to meet the target of the club. According to the club's manager, Bashir Saleh has been appointed on an interim base until the search for a permanent replacement. Meanwhile, the decision comes as a result of Mr. Audu's inability to meet up the performance target set by the club at the beginning of the season. Former Nigerian Super Eagles captain Ahmed Musa has rallied support for new appointed Super Eagles coach Vinny De George. The former Aimba International National Gaffer was permanently appointed as the Eagles head coach after he oversaw the two international friendly against Ghana and Mali. While speaking in Uyo on Sunday after a light training, Ahmed Musa says winning both World Cup qualifier against the Bafana Bafana of South Africa and the Squirrels of Benin will improve the confidence of the team. Meanwhile, giving total support to the team urged that he will give his 100% to the team in earnest and also in the future. Meanwhile, South Africa Football Association has informed their Nigerian counterparts NFF that they will travel to Nigeria on Wednesday for their Friday's crucial 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifier match build for the Coswell Apavio Stadium in New York Home State. According to Safa, his delegation of the Bafana Bafana is expected to arrive in Nigeria on Wednesday. France forward Kenan Mpape says it has become a dream come true for him as his long awaited move to Real Madrid was confirmed on Monday evening. Mpape, who is 25 years old, would move to the Bernabeu on a five year deal when his Paris and Germain contract expires on the 30th of June. He will earn around 15 million euros plus a one round 50 million euros add ons and sign on bonuses to be paid over five years. And he will keep a percentage of his image rights. Mpape's arrival in Spanish capital is likely to prompt suggestion of a new Galactico era at the club giving the exciting prospect of him lining up alongside Brazil for Brazil forwards Vinicius Junior Rodrigo and fellow new signee Andre and English midfielder should belly now and that's all on sports news over to you on wifi Right now, weather report.
This brings us to the end of the news tonight, but just before I go, a recap of the news. You heard that Nigeria's main labor unions have suspended an indefinite strike for a week in order to continue talks with the government over a new minimum wage. The news agency of Nigeria, NAN, is pledged to support politics and business TV to curb the menace of fake news in the country. On business news, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria has accused the Central Bank of Nigeria of prioritizing the financial sector over the real sector in the country. On the foreign scene, the United Nations has renewed calls for an end to violence against Palestinians in the occupied West Bank. An export ahead of Wednesday's draw for the FIFA on the 21 Cup slated for Colombia later this year. Nigeria's under 20 girls, the Falcons have been grouped in for two, along with Brazil, United States of America, Netherlands, Mexico, and New Zealand. Right, that's it for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. From all of us right here, it's bye for now.